What is up everybody? Mr. Pertis here. Welcome to our final tips. AP exam 2020 quarantine COVID coronavirus exam. So this is kind of my final tips. I got two separate things here. I'm going to go with this part first and then I'll give you my final part, which I think might be more important for the exam day. But I just got a couple final tips here. I know you've been bombarded with information, especially if you're taking multiple AP classes. So um, I just want to kind of summarize a lot of this stuff into one place. First, online testing stuff. I've been talking about this for a month now, but I'm going to remind you one more time. You can find your entrance ID in your email two days before the exam. If you're not getting College Board emails, you can log on to your College Board account. I will have the link in the other doc that I'll show you in a second, but make sure you have it. Two days before, make sure you have it. Don't try and find it at 1.30 the day of the exam and start panicking because you can't find it. No need for the unnecessary stress. 48 hours before, two o'clock on Tuesday, you should have it, okay? Um, second, if you use Chrome, and if you have Grammarly as an extension, you have to disable it. If you don't know what Chrome is, I will show you in a, or if you don't know what Grammarly is, I'll show you in a second. You can see if you have it. Number three, don't handwrite the exam. I know we said early on you have the option. I'm hearing horror stories of people trying to upload images from their phone, converting it. It's not uploading all kinds of problems. Don't just, just type it, type it and then copy and paste it into what the college board gives you. Um, hopefully you did the sample exam uh, like a week and a half or two weeks ago, like I told you to. Um, if not, you can scroll back through some old posts and find it and make sure everything works. So there's that. The other thing I've heard from people who've taken exams already is the time moves fast. And as you minimize one, one side of your browser with the question and you maximize something else, you lose where the time is. So I would, before the exam, in fact, you could do it right now, take out your phone, set a timer for 2.45, on Thursday and have the phone next to you. And when the timer goes off, you know you have five minutes to upload. Um, don't lose track of time because you don't want to hear some kind of countdown timer going on where you have to turn something in and you're panicking because you can't. Um, give yourself three minutes to upload. I know there's 50 minutes total to up, like between the writing and uploading. So you have 45 minutes to write, five minutes to upload. I would say at like the 47 minute mark, you should just start uploading. You don't want to mess around with that time too much because if something goes wrong, you don't want to freak out and there's just, it's just not worth it, okay? Last, I can't troubleshoot for you. Don't email me or text me that you can't find something. There's nothing I can do. I can't reset, I can't find passwords, I can't find IDs. There's nothing I can do to help you, all right? If things don't work, call College Board. If you have an issue with your internet that day, you can, uh, there is a way to apply for a waiver and to take the makeup exam in June, but I heard, I the rumor is it's not gonna be just an easy process that they give it to anyone who asks. So there's that as well. In terms of the test format, I mentioned this in our DBQ explanation, but if you haven't watched it yet, the sample exam has shorter exams than the past exams. If you go on Classroom now, I posted that sample exam, so you can take a look at it. You can practice it if you want, um, but you'll notice the documents are much shorter than the ones we've worked with. That's a great thing because I think the documents are going to be shorter than what we've had over the course of the year and what your traditional DBQ would be. Number two. It's contextualization. Remember the bullseye. Don't go too far outside of the bullseye. All right, stick close to the time period and the bullseye. Remember, thesis, use four documents to prove your topic. I would hit two documents. If you're going to, you have to hit two documents correctly. I wouldn't do more than four. I would say three is a sweet spot. Um, I would just try and do three and hope that you're doing it right. I feel like if you're not getting two of three right, it's not worth doing four because you're probably not, it's probably not working for you. Um, outside evidence, shoot for two sentences each for outside evidence. Outside evidence, you get two different points, remember? So there's a point for one outside evidence, a point for the second one. I would shoot for two sentences. Don't try, don't keep it short. It's 20% of the exam is outside evidence, so you wanna include as much as you can. This is all about the review sheets, have them in front of you, I've been talking about tips the whole time. Do not Google anything. Don't waste your time with a Google search, please. You have all these review sheets in front of you, just work through what you can. It's not worth, I've seen these trending topics on Google, um, like the day of the AP Gov exam, SCOTUS, which stands for the Supreme Court of the United States of America, trended during the AP exam. So people are Google searching it, don't do it, um, you're gonna be okay. Use all four, 45 minutes. If you if it's 30 minutes in and you're done and you're one of those miraculous people, go back and add stuff. Do not submit with 30 minutes into the, with 30 minutes, 30 minutes into the exam. You, if you have extra time, use it, add stuff to your essay, go back, check stuff, use every single minute you can. 
um, of those 45 minutes and I would say in two minutes of the upload uh, to take care of it. Last, this is my life advice. I say this kind of stuff every year to my AP class before the exam. In the grand scheme of things, this test is not important. Seriously, in life, world, global, even in just your life, when you're 41 years old, sitting here talking to a screen um, about what life advice is, I'm going to tell you that you won't look back on your sophomore year AP exam and care too much. In fact, you can get a three on your AP US um, exam as a junior in high school and then become an AP teacher. That's how little it matters. Um, you are more important than the test. The test, your grade doesn't define you. It doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It's okay. Um, and I don't say that to mean like, oh, don't study or look at anything. I just mean that when it doesn't matter. Scores come out in mid-July, early to mid-July. You're not going to care at that point. Trust me. It, you're not going to care. Um, I mean, you might be like, oh, I got a two. This sucks. And then you're going to be like, all right, I'm going to go outside and just hang out. Um, hopefully, we'll go outside at that point. Um, if you get a five, that's awesome. But no one's going to be there. To, there's no party and celebration. There's no streamers that are going to get thrown because you get a five. And that, but that's still cool. Um, the most important thing for this, you and what colleges want to see, you took the most challenging course you could while you're at West Hampton Beach for social studies. All right, you passed the class, I think, um, and that's what colleges care about. If you get, if you don't get a three or higher, if you get a one or a two, no college is ever going to see it. No one needs to know. It's not a big deal. It's okay. Um, if you do get a three, you might not get credit anyway, but it looks good. You know, it feels good. So um, that's what I got. That's probably a weird thing for a teacher to say that a test doesn't matter, but honestly, it's not worth you freaking out. It's not worth losing sleep over. It is a okay. So here's the second thing I got for you. Um, this is a checklist that I'm going to put on classroom. I want you to print it out, have it in front of you. Um, the exam starts at two on Thursday. It's May 21st. Um, I log on a half hour early. Just log on, get yourself set up, make sure everything looks good, you know, keep it open, have everything in front of you, look over some stuff, go through some things in your mind, whatever it is. You should get an email two days before with your e-ticket. That's whatever email the college board, you've provided the college board. If you're not getting the emails or it's not going through, um, you can just click on this link here and that will take you to the AP login and you should see your e-ticket two days before, okay? You click on that e-ticket, it'll bring you to the exam. I can, like I said, I can't help you troubleshoot the exam. If you have technical issues, text a friend, not me. Okay. Um, what you should have in front of you, these are the, this is a checklist of things that I would print out and have in front of you. Review sheet one through six, the hip sheet, uh, which you can find on classroom and your eight character ID. That's this ID here. That's your e-ticket. You want to put that at the top of your essay. Okay. So this eight character ID, you want to put that on top of your essay. And obviously I would have this checklist in front of you as well. All right. So. That's nine things, but once the exam starts and you realize the time period in question, you can get rid of some of these and toss them to the ground like we've been talking about, okay? Um, exam structure I have on here, you should know this. Remember, put your put this on top. Again, you can when you get your AP exam, you can start a Google Doc and put this on top if you want. You can also take that, the if you really wanted to, the outlines we've been working on, you can take that outline, put it on a Google Doc with your um, ID, work through that doc and or work through it when you start the exam and then use that same doc to type your essay if you want it's up to you however you want to do it you've been working on these you know better than me um, so put your ad your ap id again i can't say this enough this is the a character id to get to the exam um, on top i have intro paragraph body paragraph i keep saying this remember to start each body paragraph with one one effect one change one continuity one similarity one difference um, for the docs how does it connect hit outside evidence make sure it helps answer the question body paragraph two Body paragraph three is optional. If you have time, you can restate your thesis, but there's really no conclusion. You don't get a point for a conclusion. A lot of people say restate your thesis for your conclusion because it might, you might word it differently that gets you the point and it's in the conclusion. You can, if your thesis is doo-doo in the intro, but it's solid in the conclusion, you can still get the point. So, and again, and I also have the rubric points here in case you get freaked out and you forget. Contextualization, thesis, if you use four documents to prove, that's three points, two points for hip, Two points for outside facts. So that's a lot, but I would definitely print this out and these things. This is kind of our, this is our go-to. And if you wanted to put on here the outline as well, you could. Everything is, I would type everything, okay? Um, that's the deal. That's what I got. You got any questions? You can write it down. You can let me know. I'm out.